Hi, welcome back to my video series investigating the ARM Cortex M33 core. This is Mark from Embedded Pro. And in this seventh week, we're going to look at the Trust Zone security extension, and in particular, how a non secure code can call a secure function in the secure world. Let's look at how two projects can be interfaced to one another. And first of all, we'll look at an example without Trust Zone based on the Cortex M3 and M4. In the diagram, we have two software resources. On the left, we have the user code with main, and this wants to make function calls to a secure over-the-air bootloader. In reality, this is two separate embedded C projects. The user code calls function over-the-air update. There's no concept of secure world or non-secure world, and so the code running in the user application is free to snoop at memory locations, disassemble the code, and print out any functions that it chooses from the secure bootloader. But if we think about how the project's delivered, it's likely to be a library.a assembly file, probably a config.h file, and a header file, the library file, which defines what functions are available and what parameters are required to call them. These files are provided to the linker and the project is linked with the security library into one output file. Of course, this means that the library function is given to the end user and they can reverse engineer the library if they chose to. Let's turn now to the same example, but this time with Trust Zone running on a Cortex M33 core. The user code resides in the non-secure world. This is shown in red. And the over-the-air secure bootloader resides in the secure world, shown in green. When the user code needs to call the function over-the-air update in the secure bootloader, it could make a call to the bootloader routines. But this would be prevented because the non-secure world can't call a function in the secure world directly. Instead, the callable functions in the secure world are exposed through a function table. This function table lives in an area of memory that's designated non-secure callable. So for the non-secure world to call the function over the air update, it calls the function through the function table, which is in non-secure callable memory. And this is now able to call the secure function in the secure world. The function table is a very thin layer of software and it's known by the name veneer table. We can think of the function table or the veneer table to be a security gateway from the non-secure world into the secure world. And we might refer to the function table as the security gateway. So to summarize these very important terms and terminology, we have a memory area in Trust Zone, which is known as non-secure callable, NSC. It means an area of memory that can be called from the non-secure world into the secure world. There's a function table known as the veneer table, and we can consider this as containing special function pointers into the secure area. And lastly, we can see the function table, or we can call it a secure gateway. And this introduces an important new instruction for Trust Zone security extension, the SG instruction. If we consider how the secure and non-secure projects are connected, this is all done through the function table. The secure world will publish an object file, project name underscore cmse underscore lib dot o. CMSE is the Cortex Microcontroller Security Extension. And this object file defines the function table. We also export the veneer table dot h to the user non-secure project. And together, the object library and the veneer table.h define everything that the non secure world needs to know to call functions in the secure world. Note that the cmse underscore lib.o object file nor the veneer table.h expose anything about the instructions inside the secure world. It's just a definition for the function table that the non secure world can call. This helps to maintain the security or the privacy of the code inside the secure world. As a quick summary, here is a slide from ARM which shows cross domain function calls between the non secure world and the secure world. In red on the left, in non secure memory, the user code wants to make the call to a function known as secure func. 
In Assembler, this would be implemented with a branch with a link to the secure func. And this makes a call into the non-secure callable memory, which is shown in blue in the diagram on the right. This is the veneer table, and the function call has the prefix sg, the secure gateway instruction. And this polices the entry point to the function. If the veneer table contains the instruction sg, then the code continues to call the function in the secure world. Observe that when the function in the secure world wants to return back to the non-secure world, it transitions through the bxns branch with exchange to the non-secure state. This is a new instruction in the ARM V8M architecture. Code then returns to the non-secure function in the non-secure memory. With the secure gateway policy, if non-secure memory tries to call a random address or a random function inside the secure memory, and the target address doesn't contain the secure gateway instruction, then a secure branch fault will occur and the microcontroller will take an exception. This prevents branching into the middle of functions or calling functions that are internal to the secure world. This week I already have the two Hello World Trust Zone example projects open in MCU Expresso IDE and I have my LPC 55S69 EVK connected to my laptop. So let's go take a look in more detail. One item that I'd like to show you is the veneer table. And remember that this is placed in non-secure callable memory. We can look at the memory in the project by going to the trusted execution environment settings. So I have the Hello World Secure project selected and I can open up the Trusted Execution Environment panel, which shows me here the memory for the secure application. Down below here in the memory map, I can see the non-secure callable region and that starts at 10 million FE00 hex. Up in the user memory regions, I see the same thing, it's region two, uh, with the name veneer table in the non-secure callable memory area and again starting at 10 million FE00 hex 10 million FE00 hex so we'll remember that number that's the address at where the veneer table is going to start great so back into my project Back into the C, C++ perspective here. Well, let's run a debug session and we can look at the veneer table in a memory window. So I run debug from the quick start panel. My LPC 55S69 EVK is connected via the debug port. Code is being built, programmed. Great, so here we are in the hello world secure.c module at the beginning of the configuration for the whole of the project. Well, we just want to look at the veneer table and the way I'm going to do that is through a disassembly window. So I'll add a window and I go to the window menu, which is just off screen. I can add a or show a view. and I'm going to add a disassembly view. A view is just a window in Eclipse. Open that up and we can see the disassembly view has been added over here. Well I know that the veneer table is in non-secure callable memory and that's at address hex 10 million FE00 and here we have the veneer table open in the disassembly view. Disassembly view means that we can see the instructions that are placed in that memory. And of course, here we have the entry point in the veneer table for the string compare non secure entry. And here, the first instruction, the gateway from the non secure to the secure world, is the secure gateway instruction. The following instruction is just a branch to the internal function that's going to call the secure function. The same with the debug console printf non secure entry function, it begins with the secure gateway. This instruction is what switches the internal state of the core from non secure to secure. 
Great, well that's the veneer table and we can see that it's been implemented in the way the theory would expect. So that's all we'll do here. Let's go back to the project. I'll close the debug session. And I'm back into the C, C++ perspective. I hope that you found this week's information useful. We looked at how a project in the non-secure world can call functions that are published from the secure project. Next week, we're going to take a look at how the memory attributes, secure and non-secure, are set in MCU Expresso. And if you find these videos useful, you can subscribe to my channel. You can like the video and share it with your friends. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.